Hey everyone, welcome back to Remember This Tech. Today we're going to revisit the Power Mac G5 dual CPU system that I recently restored. If you haven't checked that video out, check it out in the link above. Today we're going to try to bring this system up to 2023 standards, or at least as close as we can get it. What I'm going to try to do today is install an operating system for the Mac called Sorbet Leopard. This latest rendition or release of this operating system for this Mac was in late 2022 and it included over 70 improvements, updates, and security enhancements and actually included some TLS uh, settings and hopefully we can get on the web with this thing and it had its own app store and everything. So what was Sorbet Leopard? Well, apparently from what I read it was they took the they took Leopard 10.5 and then an unreleased beta version of 10.6 and they combined that unofficially and made this Sorbet Leopard operating system. So come along with me while I try to get Sorbet Leopard installed and see what new features and functions it has. Well, let's get right into it. Enough messing around. Come on, let's go. First you have to use the disk utility and then you need to create a partition using the Apple partition map. But first I'm gonna erase this disk. Uh, and then we can create a partition. So we use Mac OS extended, extended journal and then we will call this Sorbet Leopard. Max Sorbet Leopard, then we'll give that the title for the volume name. Enter, and then partition. You sure you want to partition this? Yes. So it's going to set it up, and I used the whole volume, and that's done. So once that part is done, this is important, you make sure you, where you're putting your image of Max Sorbet Leopard, you need to partition it secondary drive first. Mac OS extended journal. Go ahead and launch carbon copy cloner, right? Select your source here, restored from disk image, right here. And then you wanna choose your sorbet image I put it on the desktop and then it's going to mount that image and as soon as that is done we're going to continue on to step three which is choosing the destination the target partition and then we're going to clone it onto that so right here everything you want on this left side for the installation for the new Sorbet Leopard R15 you should choose that Select the destination and we called the new volume Max Sorbet Leopard so we wouldn't get it confused. We'll just go ahead with the existing setup and we're going to choose clone. And hit OK. Now this process right here should take anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes depending on how fast your system drives are and what processor and RAM you have in your system. I have the G5 dual 2 gigahertz G5 processors, 2.5 gig of RAM and I am transferring from one SSD to another internal across the SATA bus. So I don't expect this to take too long. So let's let it go for a few minutes and we'll be right back. So the Sorbet Leopard image should come with over 70 different updates and improvements, security function, patches. It won't necessarily give you the full functionality of a modern day Mac OS, but it'll probably come as close as you can get for a G5 Mac, you know? It also will give you, from what I've read, access to the, the Apple application store, the Mac store. It's a modified version. I don't think it's really the Apple one, but it'll have all the, well, it might, we'll check it out. It might, it's gonna have all the software old uh, versions that are compatible with the G5. And it should have updates for Safari with the 
or the TLS 1.3 security settings that we should maybe be able to get onto YouTube and test that out and do some almost modern day browsing. This is a quarter of the way through and it's flying. And if you're gonna do this, make sure you have a fast SSD and make sure that you use the, you know, if you have a mechanical drive, I guess that's the best you can do, but SSDs are so cheap now, you can get a 256 gig SSD for 14 bucks, even a cheap one. So why not? So we'll be right back, fingers crossed. I have successfully completed the clone of the Sorbet Leopard R15 onto the 128 gig uh, Samsung SSD. I'm gonna hit OK and we're, we're gonna shut the machine down and we're going to pull the other drive out and hopefully we can boot up off of Sorbet Leopard. Let's give this a shot, shall we? Power the machine on. Don't know if it's going to work. It's not recognizing the drive. That's not cool. It's supposed to, but it didn't. Oh, it's booting up. It's booting up. I switched over the drive with Sorbet that I cloned onto the other channel and it looks like it might be booting into sorbet configuration and installation fingers crossed oh here it is oh wow Let's see how this is. Okay, so it says. Just zooming right through the, uh, you know, the setup. I wonder if I have to put in my Apple ID. You don't always have to. We can skip through this. So I put all the prerequisite information and ready to go. Um, let's see what's new on here, shall we? The desktop is clearly changed, up to date. But look at the taskbar on the bottom. Look at it, it's completely, it's like the 3D one. The cascading, yep, this is definitely cool. Now let's look at the Apple about this Mac. It says Mac OS X version 10.5.9, Mac Sorbet Leopard. Let's see what else is new, shall we? Look at the Sorbet App Store. The Sorbet App Store, it's got its own app store. Check this out. Now, this is uh, Aqua Web Micro. It's like an up-to-date web browser for the system. So you can basically get on the websites, you know, with upgraded TLS, YouTube, all that good stuff. Quicksilver, I don't know what that is. Paintbrush, core player must be a movie player. Look, there's a DVD player app. Let's download this. Oh, it brings you the Macintosh Garden website. It's not uh, an app store, it's just links. It's like links to the downloads from the internet. <laughs> yeah, anyways, let's download this and we'll wait for that to do its thing. Go back to the Sorbet App Store. 
internet, all kinds of stuff in here. 104 Fox, that's an old browser. I don't think it's supported much anymore. Productivity apps. Um, look at this, uh, some photo editing software, Aperture 2, Photoshop, Quark, Xpress, Blender, that's uh, audio, multimedia. And this is, you know, this is VLC player, you need that. Tons of stuff, games, some basic games. What is this, Halo? Halo? No way, I don't think I'll be able to play this, but productivity, you know, I installed the whole labor office suite and that works great. So you can do all kinds of, uh, you know, Word docs and everything. There's these random web browsers here that I kind of didn't really get to work. Let's pull up Safari while we're at it and check out if YouTube can render. Last time it was not possible to render, work, anything, you know? Why isn't it maximized? Why isn't it? There it goes. This is generic YouTube page where basically, you know, I'm not logged in. So let's go. I am basically on YouTube, modern day web browsing. Oh, check this out. My new video is up. So we're on a almost two decades old with the modern web browser capability. How awesome is that? This is going to be an unboxing of a mini Intel based PC. Now, from this is pretty heard, sweet, everyone. I can't verify it until I get in the testing this system in another video. Stay tuned for that. So YouTube works. Let's see full screen. We got an anemic video card in here. Here's the settings. It's at 360. We we can go up to 720p with this video card. That's the best we can do. It's a 64 meg 5200. It's based on the 12th gen CPU. Let's see if it chokes. From Intel and it uses four of their efficiency cores for this system. Yes, it's a quad core system. Now, I'm gonna get into it right now. Come on, let's go. So, <clears throat> let's put this into perspective. If I need to get anything above 720p, I need to upgrade this Max video card because it's old and I'd probably need a ATI 800 or 850XL. Uh, AGP, if I can find one, or maybe a uh, 6800 GT NVIDIA, but they're rare, you know, the ATI is probably more easier to get. But Safari is on the web, browsing and able to play YouTube videos. That is pretty cool. Couldn't even do that before with uh, Tiger. I couldn't get a compatible browser to with the TLS uh, settings to be able to browse the web. This is nice. Let's see if we can go here. Some of the newer sites might not work, but I mean, this is MSN and that works pretty good. It's a little slow to load, but come on, the computer is almost 20 years old. Tech site. Uh, gave me a certificate error, but let's see if we can still load. Partial loading, we had a certificate error, so that explains something. But most everything you can get to, YouTube works okay. So most everything's okay for this 20 year old computer. For the fact that you can even get on the web nowadays and play some minor games and do productivity software and have the utilities that you had back in the day. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's go through Sorbet Leopard and check out some system preferences here. You can convert and uh, set up your personal appearance of the different settings you want, how many applications, documents, etc. Desktops and screensavers you can change. Uh, they added uh, quite a few 
uh, backgrounds for your desktop, nature, plants, abstract, black and white. You can select your own, the dock, you can say how large the bottom here, the dock you want, or you can put how small you want it. If you want magnification, like let's say you have bad eyes, you can do that. Expose in spaces. I don't know what that is, but I guess it lets you organize your different windows into groups so you don't have as so much clutter. Um, security settings. Uh, file vault and firewall settings. So you can specify who you want to connect to the system. CD, DVD, display settings. Right now it's 1680 by 1050 on this monitor, and that's my test monitor. That's the max it can display at. Energy saver, you got profiles and how and when to put the computer to sleep and come out of hibernation. Select with the power button one you can do from that. Keyboard and mouse settings, sound settings, network settings, uh, DHCP, Firewire, Ethernet, if you want to switch your IP settings. Here's QuickTime, here's sharing if you need to share files across your Mac. This is old school, but this is what it is. Your accounts, date, time, parental controls. Software update. Let's try software update and see if it pulls anything down. So there's nothing there. It's up to date as far as you can get for this system. Time machine. Time machine is your backup utility. You can set it to backup how much space you want to put, use, and you can set it to go to like your USB drive here. That's something that exists on modern day Macs to this day in fact. Startup disk and if you have more than one operating system in here or dual boot or you have you know do another disk you can use that. So that's what's under system preferences for now. Finder. Finder you just have your desktop, your profile, applications. So the applications here See if I can maximize this. Oh, that was weird. Got okay. standard stuff, dictionary, DVD player, chess, sync, chat. You got the chat function, iTunes, Safari, photo booth, um, time machine, quick time. And then there's Sorbet Tools, which is a little bit different. Universal ad blocking. You can turn that on or off, disabling this. Um, it's like your ad blocker. And peripherals. Apparently you can use your magic mouse and keyboard now with this operating system if you have a modern day Apple keyboard or mouse. RAM disks, not sure what you use that for, but you've got that option. All right, now what else can we look at? iTunes, utilities. Your utilities are right here on the bottom of your bar. Got your disk utility, which you probably will use. You got a migration of assist it in case you're gonna update or upgrade, but you're not gonna be able to do that on this Mac because it's either the most update, up-to-date operating system you can get. It's not technically sponsored by Apple or supported, but that's what this is. Uh, voiceover utility, that's pretty cool. Um, Activity monitor, which is how much of your system resources are in use. System memory, CPU, system memory. We're using one and a half gig of memory. Wow, out of the 2.5, that's pretty heavy. We only use a little under 10 gig for this install though. Not too bad. Tells you what's, what's running and what's taking up the most processes. Uh, grab, grapher, audio MIDI setups for your audio. You can do remote install for a different Mac OS X. We've got LibreOffice, the full office suite on this computer now. Downloaded. Um, this is like Word or Doc.
and it works good. Don't save. Now I've got Xbench here and now next thing that I'm going to do is start the Xbench test to get a formal benchmark as much as we can for this system. So let's go ahead and start and uh, we'll wait and get the results in a little bit. The benchmark test has completed. I'm gonna zoom in as best I can. I'll read some of them. Two and a half gig RAM, it's got um, Power Mac 73, two dual core G5, two gigahertz, L1 and 64K and 32K data. L2 cache is 512K. It runs at full speed of the CPUs. Bus frequency is a gigahertz, and of course I got the anemic GeForce FX 5200, which is only 64 meg. And I've got an old Samsung SSD 830 drive, but it still works great. So for the CPU test, we've got floating point of 3.17 gigaflops a second. For a thread tests, it scored 87. Computation, 103. And memory tests is 101. Um, OpenGL, jumping down to what I know what might matter, is 87, so 111 frames a second. And the disk uh, got a sequ sequential read of 180, uh, 203 for the uncached write, 124 megabits per second, and of course, yeah, well, the drive is only 150 max, so it's not horrible, right? Here we have Quake Arena for the Mac. I'm running this on the Sorbet Leopard on the G5. Let's see if the setup is uh, game options. Great. I don't even see where the uh, display options are, but let's see. Maybe we can just play single player and let's play this. And then let's play a scrimmage. And let's say this one looks cool. We got some bots in here. And let's go. That's a grenade launcher. You can see how it's like all pixelated and stuff. But and this game is 20 years old as well. Oh, this is a cool weapon. So anyways, that's a blast from the past. That's some Quake Arena on the Mac G5. So where did I find this? It's on the Sorbet App Store here, which is comes pre-installed by default with the uh, Sorbet Leopard, and uh, it's under games. 
couldn't get Halo to run, but that's no surprise. And they've got like uh, this Minecraft, I couldn't get that to run. There's Super Mario Kart 64. There's a bunch of emulators too, but haven't really gotten into that to play it. So, we did a couple benchmarks. We got this Sorbet Leopard to run, install on the G5 Mac. We played some games, we got some office utilities running. Uh, breathed new life into this 20 year old computer. And if you've got one of these old G5s, maybe even a higher end G4 laying around and you wanna get some nostalgia aspect of it or even get a little bit of modern day usability out of it, then I suggest you highly check out Sorbet Leopard for Mac. It'll bring you up to some modern day versatility and usability in 2023 and getting this G5 up to date with Sorbet Leopard. Thanks for watching. Remember this tech.